nice podium. I guess it's for the non-Viking DNA in us, a little step. <laughs> Jack! <laughs> Good evening. Nusakut, konak swak, nakumik, thank you. Fellow panelists, <clears throat> distinguished guests, I'm honored to participate in this gathering of leaders and renowned specialists from around the Arctic, Arctic Circle here in Nuuk. I have been at the two previous Arctic Circles in Reykjavik, and uh, I'm particularly pleased that I've been invited to uh, come to this one. Oh, I have slides that I have to... How does it go? Can you stop my time? <laughs> okay. So I trust this presentation will give you the information about uh, our region, a better understanding of Makivik Corporation, our current businesses and subsidiaries, enterprises, some of our challenges and issues that we face, our resources, benefits, and uh, Nunavik Inuit and the future of uh, businesses and uh, opportunities that we have within. So for those of you who do not know Nunavik, Nunavik is uh, um, the area, it is shown on the map here, it's our homeland of uh, Nunavik Inuit located in northern Quebec, Canada, and the surrounding offshore. The total surface area is 507,000 square kilometers, representing approximately one-third of the land base of the province of Quebec. 12,000 Samad Inuit uh, live in Nunavik, comprising of 90% of the resident population. The balance of inhabitants are people from various ethnicities, employed by various local and regional organizations, ranging from hospitals, schools, municipal services, stores as well as mining sector. We live in 14 communities spread along the coast and the region is only accessible by air during the open water or by sea during the open water season. Neither road nor railway connect the region, which is a reality which astronomically increases the cost of living. The largest community is Kudrak, where I now live, and it is the administrative hub and uh, the region uh, it is the administrative hub and where Makivik has its head office. This shows a picture of uh, our last board meeting of Makivik Corporation in my home community of Saluit. Makivik Corporation is a birthright organization established in 1975 uh, <clears throat> to represent the Nunavik Inuit ethnic rights pursuant to the James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement, the first modern land claim agreement in Canada. Makivik, which means in Inuitidut to rise up, is a fitting name for the organization mandated to protect the Inuit of Nunavik. The Inuit rights, interests, and financial compensations provided by the aforementioned JBNQA. Although non for profit, the corporation's various mandates range from owning and operating large profitable businesses, enterprises, and generating jobs to social economic development, improving housing conditions to the protection of Inuit language, culture, and natural environment. Makivik's successes demonstrate, demonstrate the extent that the modern Aboriginal treaties and land claims agreement can benefit, benefit both governments and Inuit. <clears throat> Makivik is composed of five elected executives with mandates including political representation, corporate governance, economic development, and fiscal management. In my capacity as Vice President, I lead the department responsible for environment and renewable resources in Nunavik, which include a state-of-the-art research center in Kudrak. Studies are conducted with collaboration with universities, provincial and federal agencies. Some of the research, research activities include wildlife monitoring, including abundance estimates, ensuring country food is safe to eat for Nunavik to eat. 
Makivik is also signatory to the Nunavik Inuit Land Claim Agreement, which in effect since 2008. We own 80% of all islands, including both surface and subsurface rights. In the Nunavik Marine Region, totaling some of 5,300 square kilometers, also institution of public government with a decision-making authority have been established to address wildlife, land management, and development impact issues. In 2002, Makivik negotiated and signed a partnership agreement on economic and community development in Nunavik, commonly known as Sanakotik Agreement. This agreement was the beginning of a new relationship with Quebec government and provides a baseline and a mechanism of economic development and equally addresses important social issues. In the 40 years since the establishment of Makivik Corporation, Nunavik Inuit have seen significant growth in the state of relevant businesses, opportunities in the region, as well as throughout the north. We own businesses with activities with variety of fields, including two successful airlines, First Air and Air Inuit, which operate <clears throat> a combined fleet of 43 aircrafts and provide charter, passenger, and cargo services. within Nunavik and Pan-Canadian Arctic. Also, we own Nunavik Rotors, and provide, which provides helicopter charter services in the region. In September 2014, gross revenues in the transportation sector alone total $340, $340 million. We're involved in other joint venture businesses, including the marine shipping company NIAS, which provides maritime transportation services throughout Nunavik and Nunavut. Additionally, we own uh, Nunavik Geomatics, which is a consulting firm focusing on cartography services. Kauta Construction, a company specialized in civil and residential housing projects. Halutik Enterprises, which is a field distributing company. <clears throat> Uh, Nunavik Creations produces custom-made fashion clothing and captures artistic style incorporating local materials. Over the preceding 35 years, Makivik has established a solid reputation in the northern fishing industry. We have successfully researched and developed a viable shrimp fishery in Hudson Strait and Davis Strait. We are full owners of a license and operate in partnership with Newfound Resources, a Newfoundland-based company, and also through Unak Fisheries. We share a shrimp license with Hikitala Corporation. Over the, f over the years, it has trained Inuit crews and developed partnership with major national and international fishing companies. All of these companies are important contributors to the North, its economy, and its community. Our many successes, both economic and social, have not come without significant effort and severe challenges. All of you who live in, within the borders of the Arctic are only too aware of the environmental conditions, that the environmental conditions are extreme. On one hand, winter frazzle ice in our waterways complicate the placement of in-river in turbines while on the other, climate change has resulted in permafrost melting, threatening the foundation of our buildings and our airstrips. Geographic isolation of our communities, which limit the transportation access to the, by sea, and fluctuation of cost of fuel by air transportation render business operation more difficult. For the most part, our youth must travel great distance to southern institutions uh, to obtain specialized training or higher education. Separation from family, friends, and home cause disruption and social trauma. It appears to me absolute in incomprehensible that despite damming of the La Grande River, we build a massive hydroelectric development electricity in Nunavik communities is provided by fossil fuel generator plants. These generators experience common brownouts, if not blackouts, contribute to the carbon output burden driving the climate change and impose limitations on housing size, design, and electric heating cannot be utilized. I must raise an important question, why is a branch electric line has not been constructed and why are we not connected to the Hydro-Quebec grid? 
<clears throat> I hear the bell ring, and I have still have a lot to say, but like all Pan-Arctic people um, of the Arctic, we are all bound by common reliance on wildlife resources. We depend on resources for subsistence food, which we obtain regularly from the land, water, and air in our homeland. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you the abundance of beautiful wildlife that we have. I have much to say, but I'm going <clears> to <throat> try to speed through these. Uh, we have mining that's been uh, coming in our region quite a bit. We have two operating mine, a lot of exploration. Uh, and right now we're looking at alternate energy, which is uh, something that we're really trying to look with uh, specialized business entrepreneurs and uh, governments to view for joint venture opportunities that will reduce and ultimately eliminate dependence on diesel generating hydro plants. Um, there are other benefits to the region that I would have liked to talk about, but again, we're very stressed for time. Opportunities are limitless. There are businesses to be made. There are all kinds of um, ideas that need to be hashed out, but again, we're always trapped for time, which is uh, uh, very unfortunate. But to conclude, I want to make clear that we are not against development. Indeed, development provides opportunities for Makivik to lead the path forward, improving the quality of life for future generation. As I stated in both past Arctic Circle conferences I attended, I will repeat the development of the Arctic must be done in a sustainable manner in respect of the spirit of the letter of existing treaties with respect to the wildlife and the environment and considering the people of the Arctic first and foremost. We are committed to work in partnership with government and industry if these fundamental principles are fulfilled. Thank you very much.